some big processes you need to know. First of all, immunity. Most of the world, as we know it in Western society anyway, will die of heart disease. Once you get to be about 80, a significant number of people will die of other causes, and fewer and fewer people will die of heart disease. Heart disease is primarily an inflammatory condition. Once you pass through that threshold and into what we call super longevity, your likelihood is that you're going to pass away of an immune-related problem. That would be cancer or infection. The term is called immunosenescence. Senescence means getting old. Okay? When your immune system gets old, it can't get rid of cancers. When your immune system gets old, it cannot fight off infections. Hormone balance. A lot of you know about hormone replacement, hormone balance. I'm going to share something with you you probably don't know. First of all, the areas of the body that have hormone receptors are literally everywhere. And the sex hormones, for instance, you would think of the, the gonads, that's not a very nice term, but you know what I mean, the genitalia, the areas that you associate with sex hormones. But guess what? They're in the brain. They're in your memory centers. They're in your bones. They're in your gut. Ask any woman who gets bloated during her period. That's a hormonal thing. Now, what you probably don't know is that hormones are also potent antioxidants, not necessarily in and of themselves, but they cause an amazing cascade. So if you choose, when your time comes, not to do hormone replacement, understand you're going to really need to crank up your antioxidant defense because you're losing a big chunk of it, and that's stuff we just discovered within the past six months. Look for this again. You'll hear it again. The big three causes of aging that you can really affect, inflammation, glycation, and methylation. This is the hidden face of inflammation. Actually, it's not a face, okay? It's, and it's not very hidden. <laughs> Most of you understand that obesity causes many, many changes in the body, none of them healthy. This person is not healthy, okay? And I believe Dr. Hyla Cass, all of you need to get to her lecture because she's going to talk about this as well. This person is not healthy. This person is a cancer, a heart attack, a diabetic, and an infection waiting to happen. This person has multiple areas of rapid increased a aging at a cellular level, and that person is definitely not healthy. But 63% of our country is somewhere in the spectrum of overweight and obese. Now, that's not this group. That's the hidden face of inflammation. A significant number of you are more inflamed than you think, and you are the hidden face. The lean, not necessarily overweight people who are doing many of the right things, you're not combating inflammation. And as we cover the three secrets and three tools that you have and that you're going to have to improve the situation, you'll understand why. Glycation adds sugar, so we know you can't eat refined sugar. We know refined sugar is really bad. For some of us, fructose is also bad and should be limited. Glycation needs to be combated because it screws everything up. Simple analogy to remember, pour soda on the floor, let it dry, come back and step in it, it sticks. Everything in your cell gets sticky with glycation. Who knows about methylation? Show of hands. All right, how many vegans, vegetarians in the room? Okay, what vitamin do you know you must take? B. B, B is a big, say again. B12, B6, folate. These are big methylating agents. They help you with methylation. What they do is they regenerate antioxidants and they help put methyl groups, these simple little chemical things which are off on switches, they help put methyl groups on where they belong. And some of the places they belong is your DNA and your proteins and other places like that, but especially your genetic material. And they are the epigenetic switches that make things happen. They turn off tumor genes, they turn them on if they're, not, if they're not properly methylated. They can turn on diabetes genes, Alzheimer's genes, or if proper methylation, they can turn them off. Methylation for most of you in this room is not really the, the same type of dietary issue. You get a lot of vegetables and fruits, so you get a lot of methyl donors. But what you don't get is the things that put them on the factory. Some of you are taking B vitamins because you know you have to and you know they're good for you, and it sort of kind of solves this problem. But here's a couple you probably didn't know about. Carnosine. Carnosine is a huge part of the methylation pathway. The sulfur-containing amino acids, N-acetylcysteine, acetylcysteine, methionine, the sulfur-containing amino acids. When you open up a vitamin pack and you smell sulfur, somebody's thinking about your future because they are addressing methylation. Now, all of these things, of course, are important and have to go through the cell membrane, so let's get back to fats. 
This is a picture that you will remember because this is what happens to your body when you eat the wrong kinds of fats. This is a sewer worker in London who's shoveling fat out of a sewer because it's blocked. Now most of you understand very clearly that man-made fats do this. Man-made fats are extremely inflammatory. Man-made fats, trans fats, hydrogenated fats, are really vicious. And they're a major cause of bad health for a significant chunk of this nation. But Mother Nature can be cruel, and Mother Nature has her own natural inflammatory fat. So it's time for us to look at the most critical fats. Some of you know some of this. Here we go. The omega-3 family is what? Inflammatory or anti-inflammatory? Anti-inflammatory. Omega-6, inflammatory or anti-inflammatory? Inflammatory. The, the slide's complicated. Let me simplify it for you. They're both essential. You need some of both. Almost everybody that you and I know gets way too much of those sixes and not enough of those threes. Those sixes and threes live in the membrane. They influence everything that I talked about. Stiffness, receptor biology, two-way pores that allow things in and out of these membranes. And not just the cell membrane, but the nuclear membrane, the mitochondrial membrane. And they cause an inflammatory phenotype when there are too many omega-6s. They cause chemicals to release. Some of those chemicals are in the boxes in the center. They're known as eicosanoids. And if you go sort of down to the center, you will see a red or a pinkish box. Everybody got that? And some blue boxes. Those are those chemicals. Those chemicals are made from the omega-3s and 6s. So they are not just structural fats. They are biochemical messengers. Also notice from this picture that you have to go through some conversions to get down there. If you don't go through the conversions, you don't get to those biochemical messengers. If you go only through the conversions of the omega-6s, you get only biochemical messages of inflammation. And that's all the only way the cell can respond to stimulus. Or it can choose not to respond at all, which may even be worse. At the very bottom are some omega-3 things that come out of something called DHA. Some of you know what that is. DHA is the endpoint of most of the omega-3 fatty acids. And you probably can't see it really clearly, but one of those chemicals is called resolvins. Resolvins go inside the cell instead of going outside. They go inside, and you know this, don't you? I see you shaking your head. <laughs> they blunt the free radical released from the mitochondria. So they help blunt the aging process. And if you don't have enough omega-3s, that does not happen. Now, I hope you get the message about membrane biology being critical. I hope you get the message that fats are the all-important part of it. And I hope you get the message that the ratio of those fats is absolutely critical. Omega-6 to omega-3s, even more so than the actual amounts. It's the ratio. How many do you have? Thank you.